Sometimes you don't talk about being on the spectrum and people assume that you're a neurotypical and that when when you observe other people's behaviors and when you look at your own and they think, oh, he's weird, like, or she's, oh, goodness, like, I wouldn't be caught doing that, but then really, at the same time, you don't want to be stuck in the, the paradigm of mediocrity that everyone's in and then all of a sudden you're like mindless drones number something 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 and then it becomes who am I really when you come out so you're constantly trying to figure out your purpose your identity maybe you're always starting over maybe you've already gotten established it's a case-by-case -case basis and for me it was establishing who I am first yeah, I was part of the Beloit Cross Disability Coalition at my old school, uh, which was Beloit College. Um, and so we did a lot of stuff like with all different kinds of disabilities and there was a little, like, I guess, segment of us that were focused on like sensory and um, other like learning, difficult learning difficulties. I don't know if you've ever gone through disability services or yeah. um but generally they want you to like have be evaluated by a psychiatrist or psychologist or some sort of learning disability specialist or whatever and that costs a lot of money and it's often not covered by insurance um like when i was first uh i guess evaluated i was probably around like three or four and i was doing public school system because i was like having a lot of difficulty and stuff so they were like okay well this one's obviously a little needs some more help but like my sister who has probably some ADHD or some other stuff going on was a lot more like social and a lot like so she was able to kind of mask that by like by using a whole bunch of social skills that I didn't have. is inherently social in my opinion and so whether you're learning from a teacher the individual with autism is learning from a, a professor um, whether they're having to read something in a textbook you know sometimes they might not like if, if they're reading say they're taking a, an English course and they're reading a textbook sometimes they're having a hard time an individual on the spectrum might have a hard time intuiting what another character is feeling, right? So sometimes they have a hard time socially understanding someone's motives for an action. So if they are in like a really intensive British literature course, that might be a barrier because one of the struggles, again, with autism is, is the social piece. I think one of the things that people misunderstand about me that they most know about me is that I use pole arms when I'm skating, but the thing is because my legs aren't as strong, so I tend to utilize my arm work in counterbalancing myself. I use a lot of improvising, whether it be from acting or actually science, to help me get through life. And most people don't understand the integration of understanding science and history and being able to use it in your own existence. And then when they finally figure it out, it's like, oh! My first year didn't end that great because um, I got really, really depressed and they tried changing my medication and that made things worse. My dorm was very, um, I guess, close knit, but also like my whole floor was extremely codependent. Gaming club here is a lot better because it's a lot more inclusive and like a lot of ways, particularly with my pronouns. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. This is like the first club that I've gone to and stuck with, actually. Um, because the gaming club at my last school was not great. Um, just like what you think of when you think of a terrible internet gaming group. That's them. Um, which was really disappointing, but um, so I kind of stayed away from them. And but um, John Carroll's Gaming Club has been really welcoming and inclusive, and um, 
game of club is interesting because it's like usually a core group of people but then people come and go like pretty much every week so um like once the same like three people got my pronouns down and then they were like stop misgendering them like every single time someone would do that i did some for my research i found out about the book you wrote with that meeks person yeah could you tell me about that book sure yeah so the book is called parties dorms and social norms um, and we wrote it um, alongside Jessica Kingsley Publishing, and they really wanted um, us to write a book about some of the safety issues, particularly for young adults with high-functioning autism. Because again, these individuals are intelligent, bright, motivated, but some of the things that they struggle with are the nuanced social um, skills that again, individuals that are you know college students um, might not kind of intuitively understand. You know, in my class, for instance, um, we have a lot of like group projects or group presentations. And so again, if sometimes maybe socially an individual's having some trouble, an individual with autism, they might not really understand some of the, I don't know if they're being sarcastic or being funny, the other individuals without autism, maybe the individual with autism might not understand that. The social side of things, I started out by moving in two days early into the peer mentoring program. Then it was called Pathways to Success, now it's called MELT. So I was trying to figure out and find others like myself, but I did find some in the minority category, just not maybe on the spectrum. It really isn't talked about that much. So blending in that way it was it was a gradual thing. I may not have had the same mindsets as most of the college students did, but at the same time, it's constantly observing and learning from them in order to figure out exactly what they're thinking, their goals, etc. that you normally maybe don't have that on a conscious level. So it was a gradual experience, and it still is a gradual thing that I'm learning to this day. It really depends on the individual trying to make it through, understand his or her goals, trying to accomplish those goals with or without people, with or without obstacles. And really, that's basically all it is. Like, it's been easiest for me to make friends through classes. Um, up until this year, I hadn't really joined any clubs and I stayed with them. Um, so that's, um, that's definitely a good way to make friends, um, I don't know, academically, like it, I don't know, it also is harder to make friends outside of class, or like just talk to people in class with like the intention of them being friends. Because like they're kind of very separate in my mind, and then I'm like, oh, I should probably have a study partner, and then I. So we have our, um, you know, our disabilities um, services office. I mean, I think they do a lot of things on the individual level. I think sometimes I wish there were more, you know, like larger groups and things to, I don't know, support the individuals on the spectrum. Um, I think there's some general things that that any student can take advantage of that would be helpful, like. The counseling center, like um, you know, the learning commons and tutoring opportunities. But I do, I do kind of wish there were, um, I don't know, maybe a weekly group or, or some peer mentorship opportunities between maybe if 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 the student was interested, if the student with autism wanted to have maybe a mentor on campus or kind of a safe person to to talk to that had an interest or knowledge of autism. I think that would be kind of a nice a nice. 